Good morning. Today I'm with uh, Cesar de la Fuente from UPenn, professor at UPenn, and is our Thermo Fisher Scientific Award winner of this year in the Canadian Society of uh, Microbiology. Congratulations and thank you for accepting this uh, short interview. Yeah, thank you, uh, Edelis. Uh, it's really my pr my pleasure and a true honor to have received this award. Thank you very much. So I have a few questions for you, for the community to know about your work, for uh, about you. Uh, so the first question is, uh, tell us about your academic journey. Sure. So, well, since, since I was a kid, I've always been fascinated by the world around me and um, I remember uh, during my undergrad just becoming fascinated by uh, by microbes and just how uh, powerful they can be, even though they're so you know, invisible to the naked eye. And uh, really thinking about how they were the first organisms to have colonized Earth and how they are incredibly good at adapting to new environments and new situations. And that's what has made them so successful at evolving you know and surviving on earth for so long um and so i always became you know i became basically uh enthused by these organisms and then uh when i, I went on to do my phd at the university of british columbia uh, in vancouver canada um i initially wanted to understand what made these organisms this bacteria uh, become harmful against humans so what makes a pathogen a pathogen and so i started um, trying to understand the molecular mechanisms that underlie those processes. And then I also uh, became uh, very interested in, in trying to uh, design new molecules that could counter those pathogens, so novel antibiotics. And that took me then to, to MIT, where I did my postdoc and uh, where I um, incorporated principles from synthetic biology and computational biology, uh, you know, additional principles to allow me to uh, to design uh, novel types of antibiotics that are a little bit different from the conventional ones. And now at, in my lab at the University of Pennsylvania, again, uh, I'm lucky uh, that I'm surrounded by uh, incredibly brilliant scientists from all over the world uh, that bring in concepts and principles and expertise from many different fields, from computer science to physics, chemistry, biology, microbiology, of course, synthetic biology, and it's just that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, amongst other things, uh, develop novel classes of antibiotics. Interesting. Yeah, that, uh, that's an area that uh, people is working really hard right now because we are learning that microbes are adapting to to the antibiotics we have and we have new pathogens. So I think it's really, really cool. Uh, I have another question for you and I think you, kind of talk a little bit about it, uh, is what is your biggest contribution to microbiology? Yeah, I would probably say um, probably the design of a novel classes of antibiotics. Uh, in particular, we focus on small proteins called peptides, and uh, we, try to, uh, we try to tweak them both computationally and uh, chemically uh, to make them more powerful, more effective at targeting particularly superbugs, which are bacteria that have developed resistance mechanisms to many of the conventional antibiotics that we have in the pharmacy and in, in hospitals. Interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was, uh, when I was in Cuba, I was uh, working in a group that was also designing peptides, but as antiviral, so it would be oh, also really cool. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The, so, the, the, the other area, area I would probably highlight is the recent work that we've been doing on developing low cost diagnostics for COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. Uh, and that's an area that we're also uh, very, you know, pushing, trying to push very hard in the laboratory uh, because we believe that, um, you know, increasing equity uh, uh, in, in medicine and, and in therapeutics and diagnostics is, is key. We've seen uh, the inequities of the current pandemic where, you know, the only 10 countries have uh, purchased 75% of all vaccine doses and uh, s similar trends we've seen with uh, with diagnostics. And so we're trying to uh, we're trying to contribute a little bit uh, to that by creating this um, low cost diagnostics that uh, perhaps everybody could use someday. 
really important. Thank you. So I have another question, and this one is uh, different. What you are doing when you are not doing science? What do you like to do? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I actually have a lot of hobbies. I love sports. So I've I've always played soccer since I was a kid. Um, I I used to play competitively. Um, I also love reading books. So um, uh, that, yeah, spent a lot of time doing that as well. And um, what else? I love movies. So I also like to watch uh, movies every once in a while. And um, I also love traveling. I haven't been doing much of that lately, but but hopefully in the near future. Um, yeah, yeah those are some of the things that occupy some of my some of my hours. Nice. I know soccer is really big in Spain. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, in Spain and it's a global sport, so everywhere really. But uh, <laughs> in Latin America too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so I love it. Yeah. So I have the last question is. What is an advice that you can give to a student, graduate student, or postdoc that want to join your lab? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, like anything in life, I think uh, probably the main thing is that you have to be passionate about what you do. And, and I think trying to, you know, I always encourage younger uh, scientists and, and younger people to try to find what they're truly passionate about. Because then, you know, every single day it won't feel like a, a Some, whatever you're doing, it won't feel like it's too hard and um, it will endow you with the level of perseverance and the level of, um, you know, uh, basically the level that the, what you need to actually surmount any sort of um, hurdles that, that come along the way. And so I think finding, truly finding your, finding your passion. Uh, if you're a scientist, trying to find those projects that really uh, lighten up Uh, the fire inside of you to, to to really try to discover whatever question you're trying to to address or uh, if you're trying to develop a new technology uh, to try to solve a problem that you really care about. Uh, so I would really try to find uh, those things that um, that light you up. Yeah, that's a really good uh, advice. And I'm sure that you get a lot of uh, requests every day to join your lab. So. It might be really hard to select what students yeah. are going to join and which one are not. Uh, thank you very much. I think that's everything. Again, congratulations for the award. Uh, I think this is a very important award from our society. I've been seeing that every year we really select the best of the best that is uh, working in microbiology, uh, around the world, well, mainly that become, uh, belong to our society, but really, really good scientists. Well, yeah, thank you, Edel. Uh, the pleasure is mine, and I look forward to the, the Thermo Fisher lecture. Thank you.